Hi everyone. So, if you ever wondered what creme caramel is, well, you should be watching this video. What is creme caramel? Creme caramel is a egg-based dessert comprising of milk, sugar, and eggs. So, creme caramel is baked in a water bath and in an oven for at least 45 minutes at around 180 degrees Celsius. So for this video, what we are going to be talking about is we're going to investigate the milk protein action towards the development of creme caramel. Take it away guys. Custard is formed through gelatin process that involves the proteins in the mixture. The protein that contributes to gelatin process of the custard is the egg protein and milk protein. Prior to cooking, the protein in the milk was in its quaternary structure with hydrophobic part inside while hydrophilic part facing outside. Upon heating, denatriation happens and causes the protein to unfold and expose their hydrophobic part. The presence of water molecules will bind to the hydrophilic part but not the hydrophobic part. However, there is an interaction between hydrophobic part which results in the formation of 3D network that gives the custard its gelatin properties. The presence of sugar will interrupt the gel formation by placing themselves in the network, thus reduce the hydrophobic interaction between the proteins. This will delay the coagulation process of the custard which allow the protein to coagulate slowly and result in smooth and stable consistency of the custard. One of the variables for cooking the custard is the medium of heat transfer. One of the custard sample was cooked with a water buff, while the other sample was cooked without a water buff. For the custard that's baked with a water bath, it has a smooth and a spongy texture. But for the custard that's baked without a water bath, it has a rough and a less spongy texture. For the taste, the water bath custard has a strong egg aftertaste and sweet. But for the non-water bath custard, it has a burnt flavour and a sweeter taste. For the colour, 
The water buff custard has a rich yellow colour on the surface, but for the non-water buff custard, it has a dark yellow and former brown crust on the surface of the custard. With the presence of water buff, the heat dispersion is more even due to two medium of heat transfer, which is air and water is available for the custard. Water, which can only be heated until 100 degrees Celsius, will help maintain relatively lower temperature and less heat, which result in slow reaction that allow the heat to have sufficient time to penetrate into the inner part of the custard before the outer part of the custard undergo further gelation. Mild reaction which contribute to the browning will be low due to lower temperature of cooking. Protein gelation will still occur with the protein strands being less denatured but will still form sufficient bonding with other protein strands, thus result in smoother texture of custard. For non-water buff custard, the medium of heat transfer is only air, where air can be heated up to infinite temperature which cause the custard to be baked at oven temperature. This will result in overcooking on the side of the custard while the center is still undercooked. The high temperature will result in extreme denaturation of the proteins through the breaking of internal bonds by heat which result in crab texture but firmer gel form in the custard without a water bath. Caramelization of sugar is much greater in this sample as the baking temperature has exceeded 200 degrees Celsius which result in higher extent of mild reaction happening in the custard. For baking time variable, under bake custard was baked for 30 minutes, while for over bake custard, it was baked for 1 hour and 15 minutes. In terms of texture, undercooked custard is liquid and watery. Controlled custard is soft and smooth. Overcooked custard is firm and jelly-like texture. For the taste, undercooked custard have strong egg taste. Controlled custard is creamy and normal sweetness, and overcooked custard have strong caramel taste. The color of undercooked custard is light yellow, control custard is yellow, and overcooked custard have dark yellow color. For baking time, sample that is undercooked appear watery and still in liquid form. It is because the protein don't have enough time to coagulate and form network. While overcooked custard appear harder and more firm, with longer time, protein will coagulate and undergo denaturation and form more network. Some water will be pushed out from the tightening of the protein network, and the custard browning is more intense because of mild reaction. A reaction involves simple sugars and amino acids. For the fat content variable, the full cream meal and low fat meal are being added into custard sample, but it is baked at the same time and temperature parameter. Custard using full cream milk have firm, smooth, and silky texture, while the texture of custard using low fat milk is less firm, smooth, and silkier. In terms of taste, full cream milk custard is more creamy compared to low fat milk custard, and low fat milk custard have paler color compared to full cream milk custard. Full cream milk contains 3.3% of fat per 100 ml. The triglycerides of milk fat are in the form of globules. The globules are surrounded by a protein and phospholipid membrane that stabilize the globules in the water phase of milk. This is why custard using full cream milk is more stable and firmer compared to custard using low fat milk. And higher amount of fat globules in full cream milk make the custard have creamy taste. While custard with low fat milk have softer texture and less creamy. This is because low fat milk contain less amount of fat compared to full cream milk. Low fat milk contain 1.4% of fat per 100 ml. For the pH variable, it is manipulated to observe the effect on the milk protein coagulation as well as the forming of the custard gel. Two samples of custard have been added 
with ingredients of different pH level. For low pH, lemon juice is used for the acid sample, while baking soda is used for the alkali sample. Each sample has a volume of 75 grams of the pH ingredient. The samples are baked with the same time and temperature parameters. The samples of the custard were compared in terms of texture, taste and colour. For texture, the acid sample was soft, curdled and watery, whereas the alkali sample was soft, mushy and unformed. In terms of taste, the acid sample was sour, whereas the alkali was bitter, soapy and powdery. In terms of colour, for acid, it is light yellow in colour, but for alkali, it forms three layers, with each layer having a different colour. The darkest brown for the crust, a light brown colour for the middle layer, and a slightly darker brown for the bottom layer. The addition of lemon juice into the custard mix will lower down the pH of the milk. In a low pH environment, there is a reduction in the net negative charge of the protein micelles. This will decrease the electrostatic repulsion of the micelles where the micelles will no longer repel each other but begin to form a loose cluster of particles. The particles will start to aggregate through neutralization upon acidification which will result in curdling on the surface of the custard. Aggregation of the particles through neutralization will change the overall charge density of the protein colloidal system together with the electrostatic repulsion. This will form a 3D network, but however, the strength of the network is influenced by the pH level of the environment. The alkali added to the custard is found to have formed a brown crust layer on the surface which is due to the Maillard reaction created between reducing sugar, which is the lactose in the milk, and the overall proteins in the custard. The presence of sodium bicarbonate will destroy the protein structure through denaturation and breaking of the hydrogen bonds. The protein is totally denatured by the alkali where the protein loss is gelling ability but forms aggregates instead. The presence of sodium bicarbonate in the custard will inhibit coagulation from occurring due to the excessive denaturation of the milk proteins. As a conclusion, adding of acid or alkali will affect the gelation property and gelation rate of the custard. Different types of milk will also affect the mouthfeel of the custard. Getting the right baking time, temperature and method of baking is important to get the desired characteristics for your custard. So get on the right track before you start baking. That's all folks, thanks for watching our video, we hope you enjoyed it.